working in the spirit of the Golden Empire. This is 17 News at Noon. Good afternoon, I'm Alex Fisher. President Trump is set to make a stop in Bakersfield this week to talk with farmers about water. And this morning, the U.S. Air Force made a landing at Meadows Field to possibly prepare for the arrival of the president. I want to show you some video from earlier today. You can see what appears to be a C-5 unloading a stair truck. Meadows Field officials would not say why the U.S. Air Force was there. But this all comes as the president is set to visit Bakersfield on Wednesday. It is part of a week-long tour of western states. Tomorrow, he's set to be in Los Angeles to talk about the upcoming Olympic Games in 2028. Then on Wednesday, he'll travel to Bakersfield where he and Congressman Kevin McCarthy are set to discuss efforts to improve the supply and delivery of water in California and other western states. Then on Thursday, the president will head to Las Vegas where he is sent to speak at a graduation ceremony for a prisoner education program. We are actively monitoring the president's schedule and we'll update you with whatever we've learned as soon as we get it. In your health watch, hundreds of Americans are back on U.S. soil today, nearly a month after boarding the now quarantined Diamond Princess. The flights were supposed to be free of the coronavirus, but 14 people tested positive, and they, among the rest of the passengers, will remain in quarantine. Sarah Harmon is at Travis Air Force Base with the latest. This morning, hundreds of Americans who were quarantined on the Diamond Princess cruise ship are back on U.S. soil. Two chartered flights from Japan touching down overnight at Air Force bases in Texas and California. The flights were not supposed to include any passengers affected by the coronavirus. But the State Department has now revealed 14 people who tested positive were allowed to travel. They spent the more than 12-hour flight in isolation chambers seen here, filmed by passenger Cheryl Molesky. After nearly two weeks in quarantine, she and her husband decided it was time for their extended vacation to come to an end. Honestly, you're much safer getting off this ship. The Molesky's were evacuated by American teams in hazmat suits. The bus will take you to the airplane, the airplane takes you to the United States, and then you get the passport. Well, we're exhausted, but we're on the plane. NBC's Janice Mackey Freyer is in Yokohama, Japan. There are still some Americans on the ship who chose to not get on that flight. They're among some 3,000 passenger and crew who will remain under quarantine until Wednesday. And only when they test negative for the virus will they be allowed off the ship. Among the Americans who chose to stay on board, Matthew Smith. The U.S. offer was uh, break this quarantine early get into a bus with a bunch of other people who we don't know how they've been doing the quarantine. Now, what happens next depends on whether or not you have coronavirus. The passengers who are infected will be treated at a hospital. Everyone else is now subject to a mandatory 14-day quarantine with regular health checks. And keep in mind, it's been almost a month since these folks initially set sail on their cruise. Home is still a long way away. Back to you guys. Clouds clearing out, sunny skies on the way as we head into this afternoon, and temperatures should recover. So we will continue to be dry until Friday. If you are looking for maybe some snow, head on up north. The China Peak is open. They have a lot of man-made snow up there. Of course, Alta Sierra is closed. We don't have enough here. Warmer temperatures this week, though, we'll be melting a lot of that snow up in the Sierra. So we'll be looking here for the latest drought update later in the week. Meanwhile, as we head into this afternoon, 66 at 3 o'clock, 66 at 5. Should be a nice day to have lunch outdoors in the mountains. Temperatures into the mid-50s. Your complete forecast coming up in Pinpoint Weather. All right, Alyssa, thanks. Bakersfield police made a gang-related arrest after reports of a stolen car. Officers say they went to the intersection of East Brunage Lane and Cottonwood Road for a stolen car. Police say the driver ran off when officers arrived, but police say they quickly found Andrew Chavez on Lotus Lane near the Casa Loma Apartments. That's where he was arrested. Police say Chavez had a loaded handgun and was later booked for gun possession and gang charges. It is President's Day and that means a lot of people have the day off. And so some things that typically happen today will be back on schedule for tomorrow. The Kern County Fair Board was scheduled to meet today, but it will hold its meeting tomorrow. The meeting begins at 5 p.m. in the Administrative Office Boardroom at 1142 South P Street. 
You can find a copy of the agenda on their website. Now to the growing calls for Attorney General William Barr to step down as more than a thousand former Justice Department officials from both Democratic and Republican administrations are demanding his resignation. At issue, his department's handling of the sentencing of President Trump's ally, Roger Stone. The Democratic presidential candidates also weighing in on the controversy. Here's NBC's Kelly O'Donnell. The president's flair for big patriotic spectacle, like his lap around the track at Daytona, in his limo known as The Beast. Gentlemen, start your engines. Not putting the brakes on the ongoing drama in Washington, including allegations of political interference at the Department of Justice. This open letter, signed by more than 1,100 former DOJ officials from both Republican and Democratic administrations, reads in part, Each of us strongly condemns President Trump's and Attorney General Barr's interference in the fair administration of justice. It's the latest fallout in the Roger Stone case, the president's longtime friend convicted of lying and witness tampering. The attorney general overruled career prosecutors who then quit in protest after Barr lowered the recommended prison sentence for Stone. Some suggest Barr caved to political pressure from the president. Barr denying that in an interview with ABC News, instead blasting the president's Twitter attacks. To have public statements and tweets made about the department, about cases pending in the department, and about judges before whom we have cases. Uh, make it impossible uh, for me to do my job. Still, the former DOJ officials demand Barr step down. Those actions and the damage they have done to the Department of Justice's reputation for integrity and the rule of law require Mr. Barr to resign. A call echoed by Democratic presidential candidate Elizabeth Warren. Bill Barr should resign. He should leave, and he should leave right now. But the White House insists President Trump's tweets that called Stone's initial recommended sentence horrible and very unfair do not equal interference. Very different to pick up the phone and ask your attorney general to do something in a criminal case. The president hasn't done that. He he said he hasn't done it. Bill Barr said he hasn't done it. He hasn't done it. Kelly O'Donnell reporting. Well, expect some uh, detours and possible delays if you're going to be driving through town tonight. The on-ramp from Ming Avenue to northbound State Route 99 will be closed at night starting tomorrow. The closure is due to construction work in the area and is expected to open again on Thursday. Closures are expected to happen between 9 p.m. and 5 a.m. every night. As always, make sure to slow down and watch for construction workers and equipment and make sure to plan ahead to avoid delays. I actually got caught up in one of these construction projects early this morning, and yeah, it did take me around a pretty big detour. All right, well, still ahead, we'll have Alyssa's forecast coming up as the sun is up and a few clouds across the Valley of Floor. She's got your forecast coming up after the break. Welcome back. A Washington man is celebrating half a century of running every single day. 75-year-old Jim Pearson is a retired school teacher and cross-country coach. His daily running started in the 1970s after an off-the-cuff remark from his coach that changed his life. Five years later, he set a 5- or 50-mile American record, and by 1988, he made the cover of Ultra Running Magazine. He even ran the days his kids were born from hospital rooms and occasionally in jeans. Well, this week, Pearson is celebrating 50 years of running every single day, a record that has not come easy, he says. In running, if you get about 100 days in a row in, it is like brushing your teeth. You just, you just do it. Uh, one day, my, my summer coach said, Jimmy, you've got to get more consistent. After February 15th, 1970, never put another zero in. Pearson says he has pneumonia right now, but still runs. He says he still runs, but... It, uh, he's taking it easy because he's pretty sick, and that's what he says. He goes, even when I'm sick, he continues to run, just takes it easy. All right. Uh, another round of satellites have been successfully launched into orbit. <laughs> SpaceX propelled 60 Starlink satellites to orbit this morning. You can see the rocket lifting off from Cape Canaveral. This is the fifth Starlink mission for SpaceX which is all about providing more internet services to those who are not yet connected. SpaceX also says that it hopes to uh, put more satellites into orbit because they hope that it will provide reliable and affordable internet 
around the world. I always love seeing these launches because even uh, it just every time I see that go up in space, it just it gives me chills. All right, let us take another look at your forecast. Here's a look outside our studios here in downtown Bakersfield. You can see we've got sunny skies, a few clouds in the air, and uh, we're just hoping for some rain later on this week. Let's turn things over to Chief Meteorologist Alyssa Carlson with your forecast. A beautiful start to the day and this afternoon on this President's Day. Temperatures will be at around 67 degrees. So sunny skies on the way. A gorgeous day in the valley. A disturbance passing through last night brought through a few clouds that kept temperatures up. And now today with those clouds leaving us skies clearing, temperatures will of course be about average. A few degrees above average in many areas. There are some clouds back off to the west, but high pressure will be building in. So I don't think we'll see any rain out of that. It'll just pass through dry. But from Friday, a slight chance of showers starting here in the valley and then maybe even some snow into the central Sierra. That will linger into Saturday, possibly, and Sunday. Well, I'm going to keep a 10 to 20 percent chance of precipitation in the forecast. And then we'll be dry until maybe next Thursday. Again, another system moving in from the west. So these are warmer systems. One hang up about this is that it could get hung up here to our mountains to the west or the central coast area. So we'll look for that. Here's your forecast today if you are traveling. Of course, it is a holiday and some folks are out and about. 75 in Los Angeles, 64 in Morro Bay, 64 in San Francisco, only 58 degrees in Las Vegas. How about Bakersfield? Temperatures then will be at 67 today. 64 in Taft, 68 in Button Willow, 67 in Wasco, 68 in Delano, 67 in Porterville. Mountains, you'll see readings into the upper 50s, 58 in Tehachapi, 67 in Kernville, 64 in Weldon, 57 in Stallion Springs in Bear Valley, 54 in Pine Mountain Club, 59 in Fraser Park, lows tonight in the 30s. Hey, how about the temperatures in the desert? Look at this, looking at uh, 69 in California City, 71 in Ridgecrest, 67 in Mojave, 69 at Edwards Air Force Base. That's after temperatures tonight, back into the upper 30s. Air quality moderate at 62 and no wood burning unless you are registered. So the temperature forecast for the next 17 looks pretty warm this week. We'll be into the lower 70s, but next week falling back into the lower 60s to start out and then upper 60s. So only one day on the map here with 50s and that would be next Monday. Other than that, uh, looking a little bit warmer into the mid 60s, lower 70s. So enjoy it. 67 today, 71 then tomorrow, 74 by Thursday, rain possible Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Mountains, you will also see a temperature increase by Thursday, looking at 62 degrees then, falling back into the upper to mid 50s. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, lows in the mid 30s. Kern River Valley, mid to upper 60s, mid 60s for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday with a slight chance of shower. Have a great day. I'll see you back here at 5. Alex. All right, Alyssa, thanks so much. I know that forecast uh, is looking a little bit like spring, even though we're about a month away from spring. All right, coming up, your business watch after the break. KGET Business Watch is brought to you by Grapevine MSP Technology Services, the Valley's leading IT service provider. Welcome back. A record-breaking number of Americans have saved up $1 million in their retirement. According to a Fidelity report, a record 441,000 IRA or 401ks accounts the firm manages had balances of more than a million dollars. They credit record-breaking markets and retirement savings. Still, retirement millionaires are relatively rare. And a huge segment of baby boomers are below the much more modest median account of just $70,000. Any average millionaire or billionaire can buy a Ferrari, but only a select group gets the privilege of buying a fully customized one, an honor that is becoming big business for the Italian car maker. Here's CNBC's Robert Frank with more. For today's wealthy, buying a Ferrari isn't quite special enough. They want a Ferrari that's made just for them, which is why Ferrari's profits are soaring with help from its customization program. 
where customers can pay an extra $100,000 or more to customize their rides. They spend half a day in a special Ferrari design center with a personal designer picking out their own fabrics, wheel treatments, metal finishes, stitching threads, brake calipers, and shifting paddles. They can even have their names inscribed in the interior and create one-of-a-kind paint colors, which are then displayed on Ferrari's famous color wall. Customization for us is extremely important in order to increase the customer satisfaction. It's a way to engage clients and having them happy and coming back again. Now, wealth alone can't get you a tailor-made Ferrari. You have to apply and get accepted. Ferrari only makes about 200 tailor-made cars a year out of a total production of about 9,000. Ferrari had two tailor-made studios, one in Maranello, Italy, where Ferrari is based, and the other in Shanghai, but they were so overbooked that it just opened a third in Manhattan, where we got an exclusive tour. I tried my hand at creating a customized version of their latest model, the 812 GTS, which starts at $398,000. By the time I added a special blue paint, racing stripe, red seats, and a special badge with my name inscribed, the price was a half million. What have you ever said no to? Oh, several times we had to say no. Let's say that if the color is a pink color with cartoons on the shield of the car, on the bonnet of the car, is something that we don't want to do. Proof that at least when it comes to Ferraris, money can't always buy you everything. Robert Frank, CNBC Business News. Must be nice. All right, uh, we got political news coming up after the break. Welcome back. 17 News is your local election headquarters. And we've told you Democratic Congressman T.J. Cox is going up against former three-term Republican Congressman David Valadeo in what could shape up to be a 2018 rematch. But there are two other candidates in this race that have a very unique bond, even though they're running against each other. 17's Anton Wallace has more. Those two candidates are Rocky and Ricky De La Fuente. No, the same last name is not a coincidence. They are father and son. One a Republican, the other a Democrat. So who are they? Well, we went down to their office in San Diego to ask them why they're running in this central California district. And the question everyone has, are they for real? I'll take this one. Rocky De La Fuente and his son Ricky De La Fuente love chess and enjoy a friendly competition. Now you can get my pawn with your queen. But now dad, a Republican, and son, a Democrat, are competing for something else. The race for the 21st Congressional District, a district which includes Arvin to the south, parts of Bakersfield, segments of Tulare and Kings Counties, and even a sliver of Fresno County. Right, do your boxy rock. While the senior De La Fuente and his son technically are going up against each other, they say they entered the race to give voters an alternative to Republican David Valadeo and Democrat T.J. Cox. The system is broken because the people in Congress, all they care is about getting reelected. And I think anybody could do a better job than the current elected officials. And I want to get in because I feel like we need to deliver the results that our communities deserve. And we need action. No more talk. We need uh, Orgullo Latino. We need Orgullo Latina. We need to have role models for the Hispanic community. The 21st district is over 70% Hispanic. It's amazing that there was not Republican candidate that's Hispanic that's running, or there's not one Hispanic Democrat that's running. Both sides, Republican and Democrats, there's not one Hispanic, man or woman. We need to have more representation. So who are these candidates? Father and son were born in San Diego and live there today. The elder De La Fuente is a millionaire who earned his money in real estate development and through his ownership of dozens of car dealerships. His 30-year-old son describes himself as an entrepreneur who works in the family business. I'm there, my wife Katayun, Nancy Reagan, and Ronald Reagan. Politically, both have their eyes set on more than just the 21st district. I'm Rocky. Rocky De La Fuente. The elder De La Fuente, who ran for U.S. Senate in nine states during the 2018 election, is running for president as a Republican and as an American independent. He has qualified for the ballot in 17 states, including California. I hope you vote for me for president. I would like to basically get as much votes as I can to show that we're not united with Trump. And on the contrary, we need somebody with common decency and somebody that has... uh, a little bit better personality. Previously, the younger De La Fuente ran for Congress in several states, including Florida. 
This time around, he's also running for a seat in Texas. Even so, both insist they care about the 21st. Right now, we are conducting this interview in beautiful San Diego in the 52nd Congressional District, some 30 congressional districts from the 21st, a four-hour drive away from the 21st. So what made you want to run for this race? I was looking to see where is most competitive. So when I was looking at the 21st Congressional District, I realized that there's a huge Hispanic majority. And the both uh, congressional candidates, T.J. Cox and David Valdeo, are neither Hispanic. So I felt that someone needs to run. I can run for any one of the 53 congressional districts. But more importantly, the 21st, it's shameful that we basically have a district that does not have a Hispanic or a His Hispana on the ballot. As for whether they believe they can win? Thank you, Ricky. Good game. They acknowledge it's no chess match, but they are optimistic. I really feel that it's, uh, the district is going to go Democrat. And it's going to basically be Mr. Cox or my son. Elect my son. He's Harvard educated. He speaks 14 languages, eight fluently. He would make a beautiful, beautiful congressman. We need some young, rising leaders. And I think I can be that voice. A reminder, you do not have to live in the district to run. The Constitution requires only a member of Congress live in the state he or she represents. Now, the top two vote-getters in this race will advance to the general election this November. Meantime, primary election day is March 3rd. In Studio A, Tom Wallace, 17 News. And a reminder, if you haven't registered to vote yet, tomorrow is your last chance. You can register to vote online at registertovote.ca.gov. You must do it before midnight to participate in the election. You can also sign and return your paper registration forms at any available post office, public library, and election office. Or, if you prefer to send it by mail, make sure you register. Uh, your registration form is postmarked February 18th. That's tomorrow in order for it to be accepted. All right, we'll be back after this. Welcome back. Your dog's mouth might not be as clean as you think. That's if he or she is wearing the cuss collar. It's a product from MSCHF, a company known for releasing quirky products. The collar throws out a swear word every time your dog barks. According to the company's website, the collar is a gag gift. Dan, they're sold out right now. All right, thanks so much for joining us for 17 News at Noon. We'll see you back here tonight at 5.